So my device is trying its best to check for updates, is checking, is checking, update error guys. Take that Amazon, so no more making changes to my device, no more just sending me random applications like IMDB, like Amazon free time, and of course, no more breaking things that were working perfectly fine before, like the accessibility service, which is what we need for our custom launchers. None of those changes now can happen without my approval. So there's three main reasons why I wouldn't want Amazon to automatically update my device. Firstly, as we've seen, that they like to push out new applications that we have no control of, things like Amazon Free Time, like IMDB TV, all these applications take up valuable space and there's no way for us to remove them. Now the next reason is something very close to my heart and that is the fact that the latest update we've seen, the 6.2.73, completely breaks the custom launcher on the 4K Fire Stick and there's also a similar update for the second generation Fire TV Cube which is 7.2.6.3 and that also completely breaks the custom launcher. So the fact that they can make these changes and break things that were working before really is quite frustrating. And the last one is just the fact that I should be able to control when my device gets an update. So yes, they can let me know that a new update is coming out or even a new update is available, but I should be able to go into my device and say, okay, I think this update looks quite good. Let me now download and install it. But as we've seen on these Amazon devices, it just doesn't work like that. When the device is not in use, your device will automatically start downloading these updates. And the next time your device reboots, it will automatically install that update. So we really have no control on Amazon making all of these changes to our devices until today. So in this video today, let me show you a very easy process you can follow on your device, which will completely stop these updates until you decide that you want to download them and then install them. And this process will not affect all of your other applications from the Amazon App Store receiving or installing updates. So do take a moment to hit that like button, make sure you hit that subscribe button. So with all of that being said, Let's get started. If you're new to the channel and you want to stay up to date with the latest tech tutorials, the latest Fire Stick, Android and Android TV tips and tricks, then please do subscribe and hit the notification bell. It's a small click from you, but it makes a big difference to me. Thank you. So I'm doing my demonstration on the 4K Fire Stick, but you can also follow this process on any device running Fire OS 6 or alternatively Fire OS 7. I will be making a separate tutorial for the legacy Fire OS 5 devices. So the first thing you need to do is just go over to your settings, MiFi TV, go to developer options, and just make sure that both these are set to on. Once you've done that, let's press the home key, and we're going to make a connection to my website. And as we know, the address for that is just bit.ly forward slash tduk, that's me, and the number's 2019. And click on go, or press the play button on your remote. Now when you get to my website, you wanna head over to the tutorial, so, Let's click on the hamburger menu and click on tutorials. And the latest tutorial in the list will be how you can block updates for these Amazon devices. So let's open that up. And here it is. Now, a key thing to mention here, guys, is application updates are completely separate to system updates. When applications get updates, they normally fix bugs. Maybe there's performance tweaks. Maybe they're adding new features. And normally, I typically, I always recommend making sure that your applications are always up to date. Whereas with the system update, as the name implies, you're making a change or an update to the entire system. And when you're making a change that big, there's always a chance that something could break. And that's all I'm asking Amazon that just give us the choice that, you know, do we really want to install this update? And if we do, when do you want to install it instead of just doing the process for us automatically? Okay, let's scroll down. And here we can just see the steps outlined. And the only application we need from here is remote ADB shell. And there's the link for that there. So install that onto your device. Once you've installed it, we then need to enter in these two commands. And as we've seen with my previous videos, there's just so many ways we can copy and paste this text out. You can use the MiFi TV application, which is available for iOS and Android, or you can even use the mouse toggle. Okay, so once you've installed Remote ADB Shell, let's press the home key. And as we know, we can leave the IP address as 127.0.0.1, which is the local host and click on connect and we're straight in. Okay, so in fact, before I actually show, or before I type in the command, let me just show you the update process working. Let's press the home key, go to settings, go to MiFi TV, go to about, and where it says check for updates, we can see it's automatically updated because I've actually enabled those processes. And if we click on it again, 
takes a second and it says that your Fire TV is up to date. So right now, my device is able to make that check and download any update it wants whenever it wants and then obviously install it whenever it feels like it. So let's go back to home, go back to Remote ADB Shell. So I'm just gonna use a Fire TV application on my cell phone to copy and paste those two commands. So here is my cell phone over here. I'm already inside the application. Let me go over to my website. Here it is. Let's scroll down and let's get the first command. All right, so press and hold here. So the command starts PM space disable user. Let's go to the right. Let's make sure we get all of that. Okay, and it ends in OTA.override. Once you have all of that selected, let's click on copy. Let's now go back to MyFi TV application. Now for you to send that command to remote ADB shell, you can't paste it whilst the screen is like this. You have to firstly bring up the keyboard. Let's click here. Once you see the keyboard, you can now go back to your cell phone. Now, for example, if I type something in like TTT, there it is, that comes up on the screen. And similarly, now I can press and hold here and I get the option paste. And we can see all of that command is now pasted over to my Fire Stick. So I can now go down and click on run. That's the first command gone in. And let's press the back on the remote. And we can see it now says that the new state is disabled user. Let's go back and get the second command. Let's press and hold that. Make sure that's all highlighted. Okay, click on copy. Go back to MyFi TV application. That's connected again. Again, we go down to bring up the virtual keyboard. Press the select button. I can now click at the top here, press and hold, and select paste. That's the second command. Let's click on run. Let's press back on the remote and we can see that process has now also been disabled. So, okay, so how do we now test this? Well, if I press the home button now, go over to settings, let's go to check for updates. And because those two processes are now disabled, the Feisty cannot go off and check to see, is there a new version available? And if it can't check it, then it can't download it. So do give a thumbs up for that guys. And if you just click here again, check for updates, we can see we now get the update errors. So we can say on our device, Amazon are not going to be able to push any updates until we go back and enable those two processes. So let's press the home key. Now, a key thing to mention here that is that this process won't break your normal applications, your applications you've downloaded from the Amazon App Store from updating. Now for me to demonstrate that, I think the Silk browser, if I press the context key, okay, that one doesn't have an update. I think it was Plex. If I press the context key, there we can see we this has an update. I can click on that. Okay, so this has an update. Let's click on update again. And we can see it's now downloading okay. And let's just see if that installs. And there we are guys. So this application is now updated from the Amazon App Store and it's not been affected by the change where we've blocked those system updates. Okay, let's press the home key. So let me now reboot my device just to show you that these changes will persist after reboot and then also how we can enable system updates once again. So let's say for example, there's a brand new update from Amazon and you've seen that it doesn't break anything and it has some great features. How can we now prep our device so it can now download and install that update? Okay, let me reboot the device by pressing the play and the select button together. Hold this down for five seconds. Okay, so our device is now rebooting. Now, let me just take this opportunity to say a massive thanks to all of the new members of my channel. Your support really does mean a lot. And if any of you guys want to sign up, I'm doing a special promotion for the first 100 members, whereby all of you can join my private chat group. And in this chat group, we can talk about stuff, we can provide support to each other, and we can even share our APKs. So some of those applications, some of those toolboxes I'm working on, you guys can get early access access to them. So if that sounds of interest to you, do have a look out for the join button. Thank you. Okay, so the device is just rebooting now. Let's go head over to settings, MyFi TV, check for updates. And it's just going to sit here. And if I click on that, we get the error. So whatever change we made has persisted after reboot. So let's say you now want to install the latest system update. So just press the home key. Let's open up remote ADB shell. Let's connect back in. So we're back in. Now to enable the two processes, the command is just PM space enable. And yes, I'm typing on the Fire TV application. Override. 
Okay, so once again, so that's pm space enable space com.amazon.device.software.oda.override. Click on run, press the back button. We can see that's now enabled. And for the second command, I can just press and hold here, press and hold the select button. And this will show you all of the commands that you've previously typed in. So not copied and pasted in, but typed in like I just did now. So I can select the first one. And the second command just ends in OTA. So we can delete the override bit. Click on run, press the back button, and those two processes have now been fully enabled. So I can now press the home key, go over to my settings, and now when I click on check for updates, it can now make that connection and confirm that my device is fully up to date. So that's all for this video, guys. Many thanks for watching. Um, I'm also working on an update to the Diplo toolbox, and I was thinking about adding these two processes into that. So the next time you want to disable or enable system updates, we can do all of that from a single toolbox. So if you're interested in that, make sure you are subscribed. If you did find this video useful, then you know what to do, and I'll hopefully catch up with you guys real soon. Thanks.